in this room have heard about the gospel. All of us in this room have responded to the gospel, and it's the gospel of grace. It's God's love and acceptance for our lives. And so when I came across this teaching, um, I really at first I kind of put it to the side because I already knew it, at least I thought. Um, but it's a foundation, hear me what I'm saying? It's a foundation of our Christian life that brings us assurance of faith and what we have in God. And which some of us, I'm there, felt that and everything. But the series of this teaching is, is called A Closer Look at the different topics that those books are talking about. But it's a closer look at the gospel. And it's being displayed like we never heard it before. It's not that we never heard the scriptures before, because we have. But it's getting into a place where we take a closer look at it. Mm -hmm. And what we're pulling from it is our assurance. Yes. God is showing love to us that we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I go on, uh, you're going to hear me say some things. But he's shown us a love that we've never uh, really walked in. Uh, we've walked in places of fear. we walked in places of uh, I don't know or I hope. Uh, not in confidence. And we're playing church. And we're doing religious things. We know that it's a personal relationship with God. Amen. It's a personal relationship with God. And, 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 and the scriptures that you see at your tables... These are some of the quotes that we use in class and some of the things that we're saying. I wish I could say to you and take the credit, pat myself on the back, and all those quotes were mine. I probably wouldn't be right here. I'd probably be somewhere else signing some books, but that's not what it's about. The teaching comes from a gentleman named Bob George, and he's been teaching way before I got saved, and probably a lot of us here in this room. But... Um, God moved on him to put some books together. And I'm telling you, my life has never been the same because I looked at the gospel a different way. It's through the eyes of grace. It's not that something miraculous pulled out. It's, already, it's always been there. And so hopefully for today, as we celebrate, because this is what we're doing, we're celebrating the grace of God. And you might hear some things you never heard before. And uh, I like, I mean, we're not going to do it here, but uh, I like a challenge. Challenges are not bad. And if you're confused, it's not bad. As long as you're going back to the Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because if we're going to be taught, uh, for me, all my pastors that I heard, that heard teach, I'm in my Bible. Mm -hmm. And when I go home, I'm going to look up what he said. Yeah. That's right. yeah. I'm going to see what he said, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, God has always given me something after what he said, mm -hmm. or why he said what he said. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, it's not really, to, to, it's not what I'm going to say. It's what God's going to say to you either before or after I say what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Because it's the Spirit of the Lord is going to deal with what we already know mm -hmm. and bring comfort to our hearts and mind according to what God has said to us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So let me start with this. Amen. Uh, God's grace. Look at the definition of God's grace. It says here, uh, definition of God's grace, how the theologians defined it. It says, what is grace? In the New Testament, grace means God's love and action towards men who merit, uh, uh, who merit the opposite of love. Hmm. Grace means God moving heaven and earth to save sinners who could not lift a finger to save themselves. Hmm. Grace means God sending his only son to, uh, to descend into the hell on the cross so that excuse me, cross so that we guilty ones might be reconciled to God and received into heaven. Um, God had made him to be sin for us. This is 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. Be sin for us who knew no sin that we might, what? Be the righteousness of God in him. Yeah. Okay. And then it says, uh, we heard this one before, uh, grace may be defined as unmerited favor, undeserving favor of God. 
to those who are under condemnation. Um, God's grace, unmerited favor, God's favor on our lives. God's favor on our lives. God's favor is on our lives. You know, I used to look at, well, let me, let me say this to you. Has someone ever done you a favor? Yeah, people have done us favors, and we have done favors for people, you know. So when I try to put humans' favor with God's favor, some say, okay, God's going to do me a favor. He's done me a favor by, by, by saving me, okay? He's done me a favor by getting me out of the mind of faith. He's done me a favor I didn't die in the car wreck my friend did. He's done me a favor uh, they were shooting and I got out of there, you know. And so we sometimes look at grace that way, you know. I got away and they didn't. You know, and so I got the money and they didn't, or I, you know, so these, these, I got a favor in the mail, we got a check or something, you know, or a light stayed on, you know, so we, we can use, we, we use grace of uh, God's favor that way. But listen to this, it says, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believes. This righteousness. There is no difference between Jew nor Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified free by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. So it's more than my friend, more than me getting a check or getting this or getting that or getting that. Yes, yes, I'm not saying God don't, don't move in those areas. Yes, he does. But it's more than that. It's more than that to where that we find out that uh, he says in him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according accordance with the riches of God's grace. Amen. This is definition of scripture. He says, for it is by grace you have been saved. Amen. Through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork. Wow. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Can I elaborate a little bit? I'm going to read all this first, but let me, let me stay here for a moment. For it is God's grace. For it is by God's grace we have been saved through faith. We've been saved by the grace of God through faith. It is through faith. Hallelujah. We've been saved by this grace. Faith. We talk about faith. Uh, what is God's faith? Uh, he says, uh, without it, the, what he says, the just shall live what? By faith. And it's impossible to please God. Without what? Faith. Without faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. And the just, which we are the just, the righteous should live by faith. Yes. You know, so this faith that we're celebrating, that we're, that we're able to live uh, uh, in God, in Christ, this faith. Because it says, he says, we're saved by grace. Hmm. By grace, you have been saved through faith. We find out that there's a righteousness of faith that we've been saved by. There's a righteousness of faith that brings us to this grace. The Bible says faith come what? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. So are we hearing, what are we hearing? So according to the salvation of grace, what we're hearing is what God has done through his son. Death, burial, and resurrection. Our faith towards God didn't come by reading uh, uh, the comic books. Our faith towards God didn't come by reading the Digest, uh, 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 you know, some of these magazines and books. Our faith towards God didn't come that way. Our faith towards God came by reading His Word. So in His Word, we have drawn faith towards God. Jesus didn't come to promote Himself, but He came to promote the Father. But in what He did, what God did through Him, it brought us to faith towards God. God, we, the reason why we need faith because we're in doubt and unbelief. So it is why we need faith. So God did. I'm about to put this down. God demonstrated. God demonstrated uh, his, his righteousness on this cross. On this cross, so we would have faith in God. Now, now I know faith has been used in so many ways. So many ways. But when we talk about faith towards God, it is through the death, burial, and resurrection that is drawing us into a relationship, a personal relationship with God. Amen. And so God in his wisdom 
And this plan of salvation, he has a, uh, he says he was in Christ. Right? That's all my notes up. He was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Yeah, yeah. In Christ, reconciling the world to himself. And then he says, not counting men's sins against them. Yeah. I am reconciling you to myself, not counting your sins against you. But let me back up and tell you why your sins were against you. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Not only are you a sinner, but you're dead spiritually. And we were separated from God. A bridge. Can't nobody cross it. Not, nobody's righteous. Not even one. But the righteous one comes. He's the only one that is righteous that has a life. So he comes with his life. And God said that he was in Christ demonstrating his righteousness. I'm saying, how do you demonstrate your righteousness? God, what are you saying to me you're demonstrating your righteousness? Because righteousness, the Bible says, is a gift. It's a gift. But God demonstrated righteousness at the cross. He justified us in the death of Christ. Because what was happening is sin, the law, stood what? Opposed us. The law showed us that we were guilty. Amen? Yeah. The law showed us yeah. that we were uh, 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 dead men walking. Yeah. The, the law identified us as being dead without hope and no life. Yeah. And so, but the main thing is, we're dead. Yeah. We're dead. And the trespass has to be paid. The sin debt has to be paid. God is a just God. Amen. So being a just God, he is not sweeping sin under the rug. Okay. So when he, when he gets ready to demonstrate his righteousness to the world, he satisfies his own law. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. You got the Bible, scholars. Let's go back to Abraham for a moment. Abraham was credited with a righteousness mm -hmm. because of his faith, because he believed in God, right. and he was credited a righteousness. Well, this righteousness that Abraham walked in God saw him, God saw him, God saw him without sin. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, holy rocks. He saw him righteous. In the sight of God, God saw him without sin. Okay. But even the law wasn't even given. The law wasn't given yet. But that's how God deal with Abraham. And God told Abraham he'll make what a father what of many nations. Yeah. According to his faith. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. According to his righteousness of faith, he's gonna make him a father of many nations. Yeah. And because we believe in Christ, who God demonstrated his love, fulfilling the promise of Abraham to bring us into this same righteousness. So we have received the same righteousness of Abraham. Through faith in Christ. Okay. So this righteousness God demonstrates to the whole world through the death of Christ. He satisfies the law. The law has been satisfied. Mm -hmm. Sin loses what? It's power. Mm -hmm. That's right. It loses its power. Where is the accuser of the brother? Mm -hmm. He can't accuse me anymore. Mm -hmm. He can't accuse us anymore. He might come to our mind and say some things, or he come to us who are ignorant to what has really taken place. But we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There is no righteousness of our own, but we have a righteousness that is in Christ, that is in God. Now let me back up for a moment, because we're talking about the gospel, this gospel of grace. The gospel is this. And what, let, me, let, me, let me take a sidebar. Uh, I have, I have uh, a table here with my family and my friends, my loved ones, also my friends and family and loved ones. But this table over here, which some didn't show, but it's okay. Um, some people reach out on Facebook and, uh, you know, and comment on some of the videos that we're putting out. You know, so uh, those are some of the people that I'm inviting because they're taking a peek or asking me questions. There's some questions you don't even know about that I'm, that I'm receiving. 
But this one got some uh, really, hmm, wait a minute. What you say? Where did you get that from? How did you, you know, but it's a closer look. Well, let's back up to the gospel for a moment. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the gospel. Yes. We thank you for the truth. Yes. To hear it by faith. To receive it by faith. Not to receive it under the law, but to receive it by faith. The gospel message is this. Jesus has already died. Sins have already been forgiven. Jesus has died. The sins have already been forgiven. The new covenant has been established. Yes. He is saying, now come to me right. for life. Yes. We're coming to Jesus for life. Mm -hmm. Because in his life is the forgiveness of our sins. If we're going to share in the forgiveness of our sins, it's in the life of Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, God says, I'll never remember your sins and your lawless deeds anymore. That's right. If there's a desire to follow God, there ain't no reason we can't follow him. All right. That's right. There's no reason we, can, we can't draw near him because he has dealt with everything yes. that will separate us from him. Mm -hmm. So the gospel message is saying to us, come. Come to me for life because your sins are already forgiven. Yeah. And when we are hearing the opposite, because in our lives, in the opposite part of that is that my conscience is still trying to be right with God. It's still trying to be uh, okay in his presence. Mm -hmm. But he has made us upright before him in his presence. 